I've been sent a BT Smart Hub and uh, I'm going to open it and see what it is. No chance I'm going to use it though, it's probably pretty awful. However, can't be as bad as a Home Hub 3. The Home Hub 3s were terrible and then they got slightly better after that but they're still pretty awful the way they automatically port forward 5060 if you have a VoIP device on the network is quite silly. So what do we have? One filter for those people who only have one phone in their house. Hmm. Doesn't remind me of anyone. Ethernet cable to have all the wires. Better do because it's gigabit. Yep, it's got all the wires in the Cat5 cable. Two pin RJ11. Telephone lead. Ooh, a uh, modular power thing. There's the uh, thing that goes onto it. And 12 volts, 1.5 amps, actually labelled for a Home Hub 6, which is quite convenient. Rather than these generic ones which don't say what they're for and you end up plugging them into the wrong things or forgetting where they come from or what they're for. Some instruction manual. How to get it set up and connected? Hmm, yeah, it's very difficult. Although a lot of people <laughs> I see it without filters on their phone lines, but there we go. Get more using the BT app. Mm, okay. Extra features. Troubleshooting, what to do if the lights are silly colours. Oh, in fact, there we go. The status information about what the lights mean and the flashings and everything. Blue light, the hub is working fine. Well, mm, as fine as it's going to work. Default IP address of it. Standard hasn't changed. 192.168.1254. Declaration of conformity. Now to get a braille version of that. Exciting. You get the standard sticker with your Wi-Fi details on it. And information on the back about how to recycle your old home hub including a website, presumably, where they give you a prepaid label or something. Right, what is it? It's bigger than the other hubs. Sadly, I managed to uh, give away my other one, so I haven't got it around to have as a comparison. The WPS Wi-Fi setup is on the side and no longer on the top which is good because the reset button was there and the WPS button used to be there and if you weren't looking and you pressed it you'd end up resetting the device so that's very convenient and in fact this doesn't even have a convenient reset button which is um, a very good idea because as I say it was incredibly easy to press two strange little feet power button which by default wasn't pressed in so if you plugged it in and you that doesn't protrude from the back of the router so if you weren't trying you'd actually think it was it was switched on but actually you have to press it and it goes slightly deeper into the router battery reset power four gigabit ethernet ports the dsl port a usb port uh, so yes yeah, wps button on the left hand side and hmm, a very sturdy uh, 
pull out a bit of info or card with all the Wi-Fi details on it. Far more sturdy than the previous plastic ones they had. Underneath it, pretty much the same stuff, except with the router serial number and MAC address. Good, can't put it in upside down. Yeah, there we go. When I know that I'm not actually really going to need this or use it for anything, I uh, might take it to bits and film it as well. But that is the BT, what do they call it? The BT Smart Hub, as delivered July 2016.